This video is brought to you by the Deck of Many and their Hecna 5e campaign setting book on Kickstarter now. And it's brought to you by the Roll for Combat officially licensed podcast, beginning their Agents of Edgewatch adventure now. Hello and welcome back to the Gallant Goblin. Today we're continuing our look at Nolzer's Wave 12 Unpainted Minis. What we have for you today are all the monster packs that sell for $4.99 in the US, or less in some cases with sales and promotions. Most of these figures are sized medium or small, but a few larger ones crept in there as well. You'll notice that all the packs that run $4.99 have this blue background on the cases. The $8.99 sets have a yellow background and the $14.99 sets have a red background. Our next video will show you all those larger and more expensive minis in Wave 12. Now, there are a lot of cool minis we're going to show you today. Some are brand new sculpts and others are versions of figures from the painted Icons of the Realms line. If you're new to mini painting, man, you should really give it a try. It's not hard to make a mini look table ready. And at least for me, it can be a relaxing experience. For now, let's see what sorts of mischief you can get up to for less than five bucks. Goblins rarely travel alone, so having a variety of minis for them can be really helpful. One of the first Nolzer sets I bought was another pack of three goblins that released, I think, in Wave 1. The boss figure here is the one on the right, wielding a scimitar over his head. The boss has the ability to pull other goblins in front of him when an attack comes at him, sacrificing them to save his own skin. The boss has a CR of 1, while the regular goblins have a CR of 1 quarter. If you haven't seen our review of the Goblin Village set that released with the Pathfinder Battles Legendary Adventures, go check it out because I think that's one of the best premium sets they have out there. You can see our review by clicking the eye in the corner of your screen. You gotta love kobolds. They come in a variety of colors and types, so you can really make these minis your own. Plus, kobolds were made playable in Velos Guide, so these could also be PC minis. You'll notice that when small creatures are featured in these unpainted sets, you'll usually get three of them instead of two. There are stat blocks in Velos Guide for all three of these kobold types, with the inventor, a CR one quarter creature, armed with a scorpion on a stick, among other fun items. The dragon shield is a CR one creature with a spear and a shield, and the Scale Sorcerer is a winged kobold who is a third level spellcaster with, obviously, sorcerer spells. It's also CR1. Everyone also loves a good flump. These small-sized, lawful good, very intelligent aberrations communicate telepathically and live in the Underdark where they scoot along with little bursts of air, making little flump Flump noises. They can sense the alignment of nearby creatures, seeking out the good and fleeing from the evil. They have a colorful glow about them that reflects their mood. Pink for amusement, blue for sadness, green for curiosity, and crimson for anger. I'd love to get a little transparent flump with a color-changing LED. They have a CR 1 8 stat block in the Monster Manual and appear in Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Knolls. Who doesn't love a good knoll and want more and more knoll minis? Patrick over at WizKids knows my never-ending love for knolls. And again, for these lower CR creatures that travel in packs, it's good to have a variety of sculpts. And with these, you can also just get two or three packs and paint each knoll up differently to give your whole knoll warband some diversity. The flesh gnawer is armed with two short swords, and the regular knoll, regular knoll, has its shield and spear. The gnawer has a CR1 stat block in Volus Guide, and the regular knoll has a CR1 CR1 half stat block in the basic rules. The Lucrata has one of my favorite descriptions from Volo's Guide, so I'm just going to share that with you now because there's just no way I could do any better. Quote, a Lucrata is what you would get if you took the head of a giant badger, the brain of a person who likes to torture and eat people, the legs of a deer, and the body of a large hyena, put them together, and reanimate them with demon ichor without bothering to cover up the stink of death. Yeah, that pretty much sums them up. It has a CR3 stat block and appears in Tales from the Yawning Portal. I remember a Grick being one of the first monsters my group encountered in one of their first adventures. That was my Curse of Strahd campaign, I think. 
Greeks can blend in with the rocky terrain to make them hard to spot until they slither out to attack with their tentacles and beaks. They're unintelligent monstrosities, but they can be dangerous to a low-level party. The medium-sized regular Grick is CR2 and has a basic rule stat block, and the large size Alpha is CR7 and has an additional tail attack and a stat block in the monster manual. They're both relatively straightforward foes for an adventuring party. I always thought bullywugs were just too cute to be as evil as they're written, but I guess that's what makes encounters with them so surprising. They consider themselves the royalty of the swamps and use grandiose titles to refer to themselves, which could also be great fun in an encounter. They're detailed in the Monster Manual, and there's more information and new stat blocks for them in Ghosts of Saltmarsh in which they feature. Bullywugs also appear in Dungeon of the Mad Mage, Explorer's Guide to Wildmount, Horde of the Dragon Queen, and Rise of Tiamat. Their basic stat block has a CR of one quarter. The Revenant mini here is pretty versatile. Unpainted, he just looks like a regular bloke with a nice coat and a good right hook. So if you want to use him as an NPC or a PC brawler, you can paint him as a normal looking, completely alive fellow. A Revenant is a neutral undead creature that arose from the soul of a mortal who died in a cruel and undeserving way, reanimated to seek vengeance. It may or may not use its original body. They feature prominently in Curse of Strahd. They have a CR5 stat block in the Monster Manual. Feels like it's been a while since we've had any drow love in our miniature sets. Our drow mage here is conjuring an appropriately spidery looking translucent spell. Perhaps it's a lightning bolt, web, or Ebbard's black tentacles. The CR7 drow mage stat block appears in the monster manual. The drow priestess of Loth is armed with a scourge, which is a multi-thong whip. She is a 10th level spellcaster with cleric spells and a CR8 stat block in the monster manual. Since drow are a playable subrace for the elves, you could use these as PC minis as well. And especially with the mage mini, there's not a lot about him that necessarily makes him look like a drow. So if you want to give him a different skin color, you can certainly have him represent a different race. The first thing I noticed here is a difference that living in the sea versus living in the wintry mountains has on the body. The burr hag lives in snowy areas and has the ability to control the weather and to cause ice storms, which she uses to bring despair to nearby villages. And bringing despair is what hags do first best. Feasting on the corpses of her victims is what she does second best. She has a CR7 stat block in Volo's Guide. The sea hag lives in polluted waterways along with marrows and other nasty sea creatures. They're driven to fits of anger when they see beauty, so their goal is to deface and ruin things of beauty, including that pretty face you have there. They have a CR2 stat block in the basic rules. There's definitely a hint of salt marsh love in this collection of monsters. The Sahuagin are classic D&D creatures who are featured heavily in that adventure, as well as in the module called Sleeping Dragon's Wake, which is one of the follow-up stories for the Essentials Kit. While not actually fiends, they're frequently called sea devils due to their appearance and their predatory nature. While they live deep in the ocean, they often hunt in the shallows or along the coastlines. There are a lot of Sahuagin stat blocks, but the base one is a CR1 half creature and appears in the the basic rules. I debated about including this when we reviewed the hero minis in this set recently. Since lizard folk were made playable in Volo's Guide to Monsters, you could easily use either of these minis to represent your player character. You've got a melee and caster figure to choose from. Lizard folk get bonuses to constitution and wisdom. As monsters, a lizard folk shaman has a CR2 stat block in the basic rules and comes armed with druid spells. This mini could also be a lizard folk sub chief with a CR3 stat block and cleric spells. That one you can find in Ghost of Salt. Marsh, which also has a great lizard folk themed adventure. The regular lizard folk mini here represents the basic lizard folk stat block in the basic rules with a CR of one half. This is the first time we reviewed a jackalware mini here on the Gallant Goblin. Unlike your run of the mill wear creatures, jackalwares start life as ordinary jackals. They were just touched by the demon lord Grost to serve as his devoted servants. They do have three forms, like most were creatures, able to appear as a human, jackal, or as a hybrid, as they're depicted here in these minis. They have packed tactics, and also the ability to magically induce sleep in their foes with their gaze. They have a CR1 half stat block in the Monster Manual and appear in the Acquisitions Incorporated adventure. The giant spider here comes on a large base, and the little translucent egg clutch does not have an included base. 
little egg clutches like this are great for adding some potential story elements to your encounters, or just to tease a larger monster nearby. But I can't think of any egg minis that I own from any set, so I'm really quite happy to get these. The giant spider has a CR1 stat block in the basic rules. The Nightmare Mini here is on a large size base, and the Mini itself is entirely translucent, but standing on a regular piece of terrain. We've seen a lot of Nightmare Minis lately, so you can look to some of those for inspiration on painting this one. They're usually depicted as regular black horses with manes and hair of fire. So, if you wanted to do something different for this figure, you could use blue or a green wash to make this horse a horse ghost of some sort. The Nightmare is a large fiend with a CR of 3. Its stat block is in the basic rules. The Black Pudding is a great monster to teach your new players that not all battles are just about hitting and not being hit, as the Pudding can eat away at their hard-fought-for armor and fancy new weapons. It can also be split in half if hit with slashing or lightning damage. The Mini has a nice design which enables you to put other Minis inside of it, but it doesn't really consume or engulf other creatures according to its stat block, so that may never really come into play. Though who's to say that this isn't a green, red, or pink pudding designed by you that does engulf creatures? These unpainted minis are a great way to make variations on classic creatures to keep your players on their toes. The regular old black pudding has a CR4 stat block in the basic rules. The minis here offer a good variety of creatures that should fit many needs. You have common foes like gnolls, kobolds, goblins, gricks, sahuagin, bullywugs, and lizard folk. You have monsters that can provide some fun story hooks like the hags and the giant spider and egg clutch. And you have creatures that should just be fun to paint like the nightmare, the black pudding, and the flumps. I'm really curious to hear what you think of these down in the comment section below. And again, if you paint some of these, I'd love it if you would post them onto Twitter and tag us so we can share some of your work with our audience. Again, each of these packs is available now for an MSRP of $4.99. You can see our review of the Hero Minis from this wave by clicking the little eye up there, and stay tuned for our last video in this series in which we review the big creatures in the set. We want to thank our sponsor for this video, the Deck of Many. Their Hecna campaign Kickstarter is live now. If you're interested in backing them, you can use the link we have up there in the eye in the corner uh, or down in the video description down below to let them know that we sent you. We don't get any money from you clicking the link, but it does let them know that we sent you, which helps us maintain our sponsorships and keeps our cameras rolling. It was good to finally see the Kickstarter campaign. Hecna is the Deck of Many's new campaign setting featuring a creepy carnival adventure overseen by the titular Hecna. And they've designed a new encounter planning system called the Shuffled Stories Engine to add a little chaos and fun to the storytelling. We'll be telling you all about the campaign in the weeks to come. To learn more and back today, check out that link in the video description down below and come chat with me over in their Kickstarter comment section. We'll have some fun talking about Hecna. We also want to thank our new sponsor, the Roll for Combat Actual Play Podcast. They're officially partnered with Paizo to bring you top-notch playthroughs of Pathfinder and Starfinder adventures. They've just kicked off their new series, Agents of Edgewatch, which is probably my favorite Pathfinder 2nd Edition adventure path. But if you want more, check out their website to see all their adventures, including the three-ring adventure playthrough of a carnival-based Pathfinder campaign, Dead Sons, which will introduce you to Starfinder, plus the Fall of Plaguestone, Introduction to Pathfinder, and Tales from the Black Lodge for many campaigns. I've got my AirPods in listening to the podcast almost all day, every day. Check it out for yourself over at RollForCombat.com. Thank you for watching today. How are you liking these uh, new unpainted mini reviews that we're doing? It's definitely taking a bit of extra time out of our week, but hopefully you're enjoying them. If you are, you can leave us a little like on the video to help others find us. Come join us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to interact more with us. And subscribe to see more of our videos and to help us boost our appeal to these sponsors. Otherwise, be safe out there, have fun, and I'll see you next time at the Gallant Goblin. Mm -hmm.